listening to Pet Candy. Hey, pet parents. Before we start today's episode, I would like to issue a trigger warning. Today's episode is about pet loss, which is a hard topic, but it's a very important one. It's not just about grief, but validation for that grief, healing, and comfort. Hey, pet parents. Welcome to Bees and Queens. I'm your host, Caitlin Palmer. This show is brought to you by Petsy. Get instant access to veterinary professionals when you need them. Download Petsy today. On my show, we talk to fellow pet lovers and discuss the wonderful and quirky world of pet care. Today's guest is the amazing Reagan Pasternak. She is a Canadian-born film and television actress, singer, and writer. She currently lives in Los Angeles with her husband, son, and five rescue animals. Reagan, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so happy to have you here. I'm so excited to be here with you. So welcome. So Los Angeles, that's a long way from Canada. How did that happen? Yeah. So, well, I mean, I was always in the arts as a kid and, you know, I went to college for it. I went to a school for the arts even before that. And then right out of college, I started working. You know, I worked, I did Disney series and, you know, it just all ended up taking me to Los Angeles. It just, it kind of is inevitable if you, if you're actually working in the business. So yeah, we ended up, yeah, we ended up just moving here and, um, and now it's kind of home. Yeah, I hear it's beautiful. I've never been out of the South one day, but I've heard it is so beautiful one day. <laughs> I've been told I am Southern in in some sort of past life or something because I am so I'm connected to Southern people. I don't know what it is, but I always play Southern people. I don't know. I, it's weird for a Canadian girl, but here we are. That is. I love it, though. It's kind of amazing. So you not only have all these other previous successes, but recently you have released a book. It's kind of an interactive book. It's like a journaling, you, you know, you read and then it, it prompts you to write um, called Griffin's Heart. Can you give us a, a, a brief overview of that? Yeah. So on top of um, all those, you know, acting and singing and all that stuff, I, I have always been a huge animal lover, always had tons of it's been into animal advocacy and rescue and all that kind of thing. And um, when I lost my first pet as an adult, because, you know, you, I had them growing up, but it is so different when you have your first of your own that you are responsible for. Um, Griffin, um, I was so completely devastated and heartbroken. And it was such a physical and emotional pain and um, I couldn't figure out what to do with it. And it just wasn't going away, you know, and especially with animals, it, 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 grief in general is just an awkward co- topic, but but um, animal grief is misunderstood a lot and you're just expected to move on. And I didn't, and I just started writing about how I was feeling and, you know, I go into it way more in, in, in depth than the book, but I just ended up really realizing that I, it wasn't going to work for me to just get over it. I had to kind of explore it and figure out why and what it meant and also come to accept that I didn't want to just forget him. He didn't deserve that. And so I started writing and writing and writing and writing and writing. And it actually took me years to finish the book because I didn't know exactly what I wanted it to be. I didn't want it. To, I wanted it to be a way to connect that's that's like that's I think my my purpose or whatever you want to call it um in acting and everything I do I love just connecting with people and I wanted to connect to somebody else who felt the same way I felt and so gradually it started becoming I started really reading every single thing I could on grief and I eventually decided that I wanted it to be very interactive and I wanted to share everything that I was learning about what it meant to mourn an animal. And during that process, I healed so much, you know, you don't, you don't ever get over, but you can heal and you can change it from something that's painful to something that's meaningful and, and honor your animal. So I, you know, I also wanted to make it a keepsake. So that's why we put it, you know, it comes wrapped in this beautiful paper and it comes, it comes in a, a bookcase and on really beautiful paper. And I wanted it to just be something that you can have a memory, a memory book that you create with me. And, um, uh, Yeah, that's what hopefully it ended up being. Yeah. Yes. And it's such a beautiful thing to look back on, too. You know, once you lose, people call them different things, you know, your heart dog or your soul pet or and you refer to them as as beings. And I love that because I think about that with my little palm. I'm like, he's not a dog. He's just 
he's him. <laughs> he, he's just this little amazing creature that's perfect in every way. So I completely, completely feel that way too. And um, yeah, when that, I thought boy, I, calling it a pet just felt to me something. Yeah, I don't know. It does. It almost takes away from how important they are, doesn't it? It's just almost a demeaning term, maybe. I totally, I completely agree with that. Yeah, I, I couldn't figure out how to keep referring to them. And, and that that one came to me. I, I, ex, I explained that in the book too. But that is, I look around my house, I've got two dogs. One of them is 130 pounds. So she's more like six dogs in one. But she, um, and I've got three cats. And they're so much more than just my pet. I feel like, I, you know, I belong to them just as much as they belong to me and my and my family. And I wanted to do it a little more service than that. So I refer to them throughout the book as, as beings. Yeah. Yes. And that's so sweet. Could you tell us about Griffin? What, what kind of dog was he? Actually, Griffin was not a dog. Griffin was a cat. <laughs> Griffin- oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. No, don't be sorry. No, Griffin was a cat. A lot of people, you know, while I was putting out the book, I lost my dog who was also just like a complete heart animal to me. And, um, and so I think a lot of people when when I when I was doing interviews were getting them confused because I was talking a lot about it. And then yeah, but, but Griffin was a cat. He was a Devon Rex cat, and he was I don't they're amazing. And and he was amazing. It was just a brilliant little. He was like a dog, actually, very much like a dog. Mm-hmm. They are. They're very friendly. Yeah, he was not shy. He would sit on my shoulder. He kissed me like a dog. He was he was just an incredible. Oh, gosh, I, irreplaceable animal. And um, I, I got him when I was in my 20s with uh, my boyfriend at the time was aller- allergic to cats. So we got this breed that doesn't shed, blah, blah, blah. I had no idea what I was getting myself in for, but he was, a mo- I call him like a monkey dog alien hybrid. And uh, he, he was just amazing. And um, we were just connected. You can't really explain it any more than that, that I, I had such a connection with him that I honestly don't think I've ever had since with, with an animal. I mean, my dog that passed away also, we were very connected in a different way, but Griffin was, it was like heart stopping. I just loved that cat so much from the second I met him. And uh, yeah. So then when I found out he, he, he had a terminal illness and I found that out when he was seven and a half. Oh, wow. That's young. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's why I'm very, very, I advocate for rescuing now because I, I, I didn't know how bad it was to how many animals can be overbred. And, and I believe that was probably the issue with him, but he, he had a heart problem. That's why I call the book Griffin's heart because his heart was, Oh, Oh my, Oh my heart. Oh my gosh. No, his heart was so amazing, but it was also diseased, you know? Yeah. And so when he died, it was just, oof, it was, I couldn't get over it. That's that's all I can say. I, st- I, I still, while I'm talking to you, over ten years later, I still can barely hold it together when I think about him because he was just, he just deserved better. He really did. Aww. We'll be right back with more pet candy. How do you do it? How do I do what, Jess? How do you manage to do it all? What's your secret? How do you do it? I can't keep up. Oh, that's simple. I make things easy. Ashley, what? Come on. Tell me the truth. Yes, Jess, I make things easy. I order everything online. Groceries, food, clothing, veterinarians. (laughs) What? (laughs) You order veterinarians online. Come on, girl, quit kidding me. Yes, Jess, I do. When I have a question or my pup isn't feeling well, I Petsy it. Petsy is a free app that lets me talk to a veterinary professional instantly and for only $20. No, are you serious? Only $20? Yes, and I love Petsy. I can talk to a veterinary professional 24-7. It really gives me a peace of mind knowing that Petsy's there when I need them. Wow, Ashley, you amaze me. I'm downloading Petsy today. So does that mean you're paying for lunch? Nope. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you gave him everything. It was just one of those things. I hate it. My sole dog was my German shepherd, Brandon. And I, like you, he's been gone 10 years. He only lived eight years. I mean, he's been gone longer than he was here, you know. But I could still just start crying because I just, I loved him so much and I still miss him. But 
you know, we got him. I was 12 when we got him. I was a weird kid. You know, I, I didn't really have a lot of friends. I was a dorky girl that played outside in the woods with my dog, you know. I love it. But these are those are the kids that grow up to be the best people in, in life. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. <laughs> But he was like my best friend. Like I was always playing with my dog. You know, I'd rather go home and play with my dog than go do extracurricular activities and stuff. But, you know, he was there with me through that stage in my life, you know, where you're turning into a teenager and then you're a young adult. And then, you know, all those weird changes and kind of, you know, I I still hold a lot of guilt because I was at that point in my life where I was like, oh, I have a boyfriend and, oh, I got to go to college. And, you know, my dog kind of got pushed to the side, you know? Exactly. No, I know it's such a normal thing. And I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. And they end up taking a back seat for sure. Often, especially, especially as, you know, we're in, we're, in, we're in formative years that we have to do these things, grow up and go to college and do all that stuff. But they're, they're always there, you know, they're always there. They're just there waiting. They're there unconditionally loving us. And it's just so beautiful and special. And people who don't get that, just it's too bad for them, really, honestly. Because- it, it really is. It's literally the, the best, you know. And, you know, it's funny that you, you mentioned the heart. Brandon had heartworms. And this was before I was in the vet industry, you know, and There was a lot of ignorance about heartworm disease. You know, we didn't really know what it was, didn't think it was actually that bad, you know, and it was like, oh, he's fine. He's fine. He's fine. Oh, he's not fine. You know, it was it was just kind of that. So out of that grief, part of what's helped me to to go on, I know that's a little dramatic, but to like to go on and continue because like a piece of my heart is gone. It's because I can teach other people about heartworm, about prevention, about, you know, if I can save one little girl's Brandon, it's been worth it. Absolutely. And, you know, that's, and what you just said is exactly also why it, you know, why I felt that I had to write the book as well, just because there is this thing we think, oh, it's dramatic to say in order to go on. But the thing is, it's not dramatic. It's, it's when somebody, when you love that way, when you love a creature, human or, or not, you know, animal or human, then it it takes a chunk out of you. And and any kind of way of diminishing that actually makes it worse. You know, I when I was researching and researching about, you know, losing an animal, I kept coming across stories from like brilliant journalists and people were talking about the fact that they lost their sister and their father. And somehow when they lost their dog, it was worse. Not because they didn't love their family, but because when you bond with an animal, there's nothing like that, you know, and um, it's a connection that's not about your po- political beliefs or, you know, or your taste in music or your or your religion or anything like that. It's it's so much deeper than that, really. It's not about all the ego and, the, you know, the craziness of life. It's it's about your real heart and your love. And this, you know, it goes beyond words, you know, so. Sure, sure, absolutely. And, you know, when you think about it, your animals are with you more. I mean, they sleep in the bed with us. You know, you get up first thing in the morning, let them out. You Before you go to bed, you got to let them out. You're responsible for feeding them and taking care of them and make sure they have water. And it's this, this whole thing, you know, it's not, you're around them so much more intimately, maybe is a good word. Uh, yes, absolutely. It's, it's intimate. I don't let anybody else lick my face. No, 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 no. <laughs> Except for any dog out there, you can lick my face. And cats, you can lick my face too. Exactly. They might have licked their butt and I'm still somehow letting them. Especially when they're puppies. Like, oh my God, puppy breath. Please drown me in puppy breath. You know, right? It's amazing. It's a very strange phenomenon, but it is what it is. There's not like an expiration date on grief. You know, it can be years and years and years and then it hits you or you can grieve and just be sad and just live in that until it's better. It's a process and everyone's different. Exactly. Exactly. I think that's super important to remind, you know, yourself of, I I have to do that still is that there's no expiration. I lost my mom. I feel the exact same way that sometimes you go, you know, weeks where you're totally fine and then it hits you. And it's still with my, with Griffin and it's still with my dog passed away this year. And it just sometimes hits you and it's painful, 
I do believe, though, that working through grief and that's, you know, working, reading, you know, when I, when I was reading everything and journaling and doing all that stuff. And that's that is why I that is why I wanted to make the book the way it is very interactive, getting through the pain and not shying away from it, saying, yeah, I'm, I'm supposed to feel pain right now. This is so to hurt right now instead of going uh i'm just gonna go i'm gonna go you know ignore this and put on the tv or go on YouTube. that's how i handled it if i'm being completely honest with you yeah but there's a time and a place for that as well but i do believe we need to carve out a sec a time to to actually grieve and i tried to make some of the memories the the way we're you know we're recording our memories in the book i tried to make them always realizing your pain, but also moving to the lighter parts, remembering the good things. And that's a way to rewire your brain from being so afraid of the sad part, because you start remembering the good again. And, you know, I put some creative exercises in there too. I do, you know, music therapy in there and I do art therapy, which is kind of a sillier kind of exercise that's in there. But, you know, I've gotten so much feedback from readers about that, just thinking that, you know, I never knew I could write a poem. And then they send me their poem and I'm on the floor bawling and they, they've done the, I do this upside down drawing of, of the pet. It just kind of, yeah, it's, it does something to your brain that, that feels really good actually. And um, then you have this drawing, whether it's good or bad, it doesn't even matter. And so many people have reached out saying, you know, just accessing that creative side, even that some of them didn't even know they had just felt really a good way through the grief and just remembering that that lighter part that our animals kind of give us, you know? So when they're gone, it's, what do you, what, what do I do now? Because it, they, they made us feel joy and laughter and, and light and then they're gone. So I don't know. It's kind of reminding yourself that that's, that's why we loved them. We loved them because of all those amazing things. We don't have to just cling on to the sad part of the end, you know? Oh yeah. And I'll be the first to tell you, you know, when, when my Brandon died, it was, a couple of years before I even knew where he was buried because I just couldn't handle it. Like I was just destroyed. And I, I feel like if if I had taken your advice back then, it would have been more facing it, accepting it, feeling sad. That's, that's healthy. It, it sucks, but it's healthy. Well, you know, I have a chapter that says, where does the pain go? And it's basically, the point is, is that you know, if we just ignore it, does that mean the pain somehow goes away? No, it's living in us. It becomes, it it becomes a part of who we are, regardless whether we ignore it or we lean into it. So, you know, maybe it it, it makes us not want another pet. Maybe it makes us not want to give our heart completely to the next pet, or maybe it gives us a new outlook on life that's kind of sad or, or something. And if we don't deal with it in a healthy way, then then we start building those walls up. And that isn't the best choice. It really isn't, in my opinion. I, I, I think that the way through is to deal with it. You deal with it in a gentle way. And I'm an introvert. I, I have I have, you know, a handful of really wonderful people in my life, but I'm I'm somebody who likes my time on my own. And um, for me, I needed a safe space to feel this stuff and not feel judged or not feel hurt. So when I wrote it, I I wrote every day, I would sit and I would say, I am sitting with this person who is also grieving and we are talking together so that they can go page by page and feel like they're not alone. And I'll share my story. They share their story. I say something that helps me. They can write out how they feel about that. Or, you know, a big part of it is also just not feeling alone. There's so much um, benefit that comes from community, even if it's just virtual community or, you know, on the pages of the book community or, you know, or in person, whatever, whatever works for people. We'll be right back with more Pet Candy. Hi, this is Shay, and I want to tell you about my new show on Pet Candy, Cooking with Shay. I make vegan eating easy and fun. Check it out on Pet Candy TV. And anybody who's lost a pet, you know, you're you're not alone. You're not overreacting. There's a million people who feel the exact same way. And I feel like our society is starting to become more open to that. 
because I know when the other day, I guess it's been about a year ago now. That's, that's way longer than the other day. You see how my time frame is. I had mentioned something about, about Brandon to my dad. And he says, you're still not over that. <laughs> you know? And he was coming, you know, he didn't mean to be insensitive, but it's people grieve different. You know, you don't forget your best friend. They do. And you know, that's, and I talk about that a lot in the book too. Well-meaning people, good people are going to say insensitive things to you. And and they just are. And I had lovely people in my life who had no clue what to do with me <laughs> during that time. I was a mess. Like it's a cat. It's like, no, you don't understand. <laughs> exactly. And so I had to kind of start knowing how to guard my space a little bit and knowing what to say to certain people and yeah, and making sure that I found my own little safe space, even if it was five minutes a day to just feel and know exactly how I really was feeling. And Absolutely. So what would you recommend anybody say to somebody that's belittling that, that grief? Like, oh, it was just a cat, you know, like you can go get, there's a hundred other ones at the shelter. You know how some people are. Oh, yes, I do. Well, I have a whole section called Say What? And it examples of stuff that people say. I, I There's one of the examples that just came to my head with that 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 I think that I wrote in there was something like I put somebody somebody says oh I hate cats and you and you your internal voice can say well my cat would have hated you too interesting but then but you but 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 out loud you can kind of have the snarky voice inside but really but then you know you say oh you know what I gotta run I'm so sorry you know this is you know you you come up with something else to say you just kind of go or you say or somebody goes wow you're not over that yet and you say you know. Grief is funny. It just doesn't have a timeline. It's so interesting. And my Uber's here. I got to go. Keep going. I got to go clear out my junk mail. I have to go wash my hair. Yeah, exactly. And it kind of just keeps you not taking it in too seriously because most people, most people are, are well intentioned. It's just an awkward, it's just an awkward topic. Oh, sure. Sure. Absolutely. Especially yeah, in the South. It's, you, you want another dog? I mean, we can go get you another dog. <laughs> you know, It's like, no, I don't want another dog. I want my dog. And it's, it's like you said, well intentioned people. They just don't get it, I guess. Yeah, you have you have on here healing through journaling and creating a keepsake because I feel like that would be beautiful to go back and look back on. And yeah, I mean, there's spaces for photos. There's a whole um, beginning part where I say how to use the book, and yeah, and you print out some photos, put them in there. Basically, ends up being you know a complete memory book. And um, yeah, and uh, I, I I mean, I'm just I'm getting such amazing responses and such wonderful feedback from people just feeling like they did their pet good. And that makes you feel good. It makes you feel like you didn't just, you know, put them in a box somewhere and move on, you know, so give us so much. And in a way that keeps them with us a little longer. I use my my own book, my, the two animals that have passed away this last year, I, you know, have to walk the walk, right? So I put the photos through it. I journaled out all my memories of them. I, you know, and I, I really do believe in it. I, I really do. I believe it makes you feel better. It helps you breathe better and it honors them. And they deserve that. They all have a story. You know, they're just like people. They all have these little wonderful beings that are furry and precious and just amazing <laughs> are just the best things ever. What would you say to somebody? I know I see it a lot because yeah, I work, I work at a vet clinic. Unfortunately, pets, we know they don't live as long as us. They die. And when, you know, I'm checking somebody out from a euthanasia or scheduling it, I mean, it's it's gut-wrenching. I'm able to, at this point in my career, kind of separate myself and be able to be professional and kind for the person. Because really and truly, you're there for the, the person because you know the pet's going on to a wonderful place. You know, the pet pet's not going to hurt anymore. Pet's going to pet's gonna be fine, just not in the way we want them to be fine. But it's for that that owner, that person, that human that's left behind. So I'm able to at this point separate myself. You know, like I'm I'm here for you. I understand how you feel. I'm gonna help you however I can to make this easier. But a lot of people will say, This hurts too bad. I'll never do this again. I'll never get another pet. What would you say to that? I would say honor that feeling. You honor the way you're feeling right now and you breathe through it and maybe you will change your mind one day and may, maybe you won't, but maybe you will because everybody is different. And um, I would just say, 
everything that you're feeling is 100% valid. And don't shy away from being sad. You take as long as you want to be sad, because I think that's exactly the walls that get built up from, from not honoring your pain. And and I believe the only way to let the pain dissipate is by really feeling it for a while instead of just putting it away. Because I believe that two years, seven years, 20 years sometimes that they're living at parents way longer. <laughs> that is what I try to do in every page of the book is just to remind ourselves how those years, the reason why it hurts so much is because of all the love. You know, I have a quote in there from Hillary Stanton where it's the price of love is grief. If you don't feel that loss, then you haven't felt the love and love is the whole meaning of life. What else is there? That's the best part. Life is love. So, you know, that just to have, just to shy away from it because of the pain. I mean, we all got to do what we got to do, but to me, I believe that's just part of the, that's part of the grieving process and feel that pain. You can say, I'm never replacing that animal because you never will. You never will. I believe just work through it, allow yourself the pain and then and then you realize, you know, you can get through it. We're so much stronger than we think we are. We really are. There's a, a poem, and I don't have it in front of me, but it's something about how on a on a gravestone, there's two dates, but what matters is that line in between. Oh, it's giving me chills just thinking about it. But it's like, these are just dates. What matters is that line. Yeah, and there are so many so many animals who need homes and need love. And if you can heal your heart properly after you lose an animal, then you can do it again. You you know, you can this, the, the, the joy in between that love that they give you. It's there's nothing like it. Come on. I mean, it's the best. So, you know, the price of that love is grief. And if we lean into the grief and say, I'm not afraid of you, I'm going to feel you. I'm going to feel sad. I'm going to honor you. I'm going to take my time then it doesn't feel as scary. And then you can go, I can do this. I can do this for the for the love, for the dash in between. Oh, it is such a hard topic, even though we deal with it every day at my job. You know, it is still so hard and it it just sucks. You know, I, I would have given any of my dogs my extra years in a heartbeat. You know, I wish I wish it was like a show where you could have like some kind of bonding ceremony with your soul pet and your life forces are like... <laughs> You're going to live the same, like they get to live as long as you live. So that's my, that's my unrealistic Christmas wish. Oh, I feel you. I feel you. Just it's, it's hard and it's just part of it and you got to accept it. You just have to. So it's true. My little guy just is about to turn 12, Milla Pom Pom. And I'm like, okay, stop. Wait, no, don't stop. <laughs> like, <laughs> keep going, keep going, keep going. Hello, hello, what's the record? 20 something? We got this. Come on, keep going. The little dogs, little dogs can surprise you. Yeah, one of my little dogs. I think she's going to, I think, knock on wood. I feel like she's going to be a, a long hauler. I hope so. <laughs> That's so funny. We have a joke at our house. It's like anything that comes into our house is either going to, m- more often than not, they outlive their life expectancy by like a ridiculous amount. Well, they have to hear good advice too, because you know what you're doing from working in the bed. We'll be right back with more Pet Candy. This is Caitlin Palmer, host of Bees and Queens, and I wanted to tell you about a great gift idea for your pet. Give your pet the gift of health with a wellness checkup from Petsy. For only $20, you can connect instantly with a credentialed veterinary professional 24-7 from all 50 states. It's so easy. Just download the Petsy app on the Apple Store or Google Play. This is a little dark humor, but my husband works at a pet crematory. So either way, they get to come home at the end. That's true. Oh, you've got to have humor. Humor's the way for it too, right? You have to. You have to or else it'll just destroy you. But our quadrupeds, like our dogs and cats, have all, with the exception of like a couple that we got knowing they were sick, you know, knowing this is kind of a hospice type situation. We have a Doberman right now who's 13 about to be 14. And it's like, girl, I mean, I'm not, I don't want you to go anywhere, but like, what the hell, (laughs) you know, stop running and jumping. You're going to break your hip. Stop. (laughs) 
She's running and jumping still? She runs and jumps. She's hyper. She got out of the fence the other day. That's amazing. She's defying everything. You're getting your Christmas wish. (laughs) I know, right? I'm like, girl, what the heck? (laughs) That's so awesome. We have a great Pyrenees, one of our dogs. Oh, I love them. She's just an angel, this dog. She's an absolutely incredible, incredible dog. But that's my fear with her is that, you know, she's she's four now. She was a rescue. So we think she was around one when we got her. So I'm guessing she's around four. But yeah, I think of her and I, she's so big in her paws. And I just, I, she's 130 pounds. She's humongous. It's one of those things. I just, I just want her to, I want her to live as long as possible. I'm always figuring out something to put in her food that's going to help. <laughs> yes. <laughs> some kind of supplement. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and I do the heartworm. I have the heartworm every month that I give her. So yeah. Great. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, and that's another guilt thing that I, because it's so preventable. You know, anybody listening, it is important. It's not a pretty death. They don't just go to sleep. It's long and they can't breathe and it's it's awful. It's not, you know, please, please, please. It's like $10 a month. You know, please put your pet on heartworm prevention. Right, right. I, I appreciate that. I really do great to know that it's so preventable. Mm-hmm. So preventable. So, and even if they have it, we just adopted a dog with heartworm and we're like, why do we do this? This was a terrible idea. We just adopted a vet. <laughs> you know? So it's not contagious? No. So heartworm is spread by mosquito. If, you know, the same mosquito that's carrying heartworm bites my dog and then your dog, you know, it's, it's possible, but it's, you know, just our dogs meeting is not gonna transmit it. Yeah. He actually just tested negative. It was great. I made a TikTok about it. It's like, your results are in, you're negative. So Wait a second. So who, who tested negative? The dog that was positive? The dog that I that we just got that's positive, yes. He just tested negative? Mm-hmm, because we, we did the treatment. We did the full course of the treatment. It's such a, it's like this huge pain in the ass ordeal. It's like three months of strict confinement, no running, no jumping, because you don't want their heart rate to get up. You don't want them to get excited. They can have blood clot as those worms are dying. Because they're literally worms living in the heart. It's horrible. It's really just, ugh, it's so bad. Preventable, everybody, preventable. My friends at Pepsi will tell you all about it. But um, so preventable. But we did the whole treatment, and he came in and got his test, and he's negative, and he's good to go. And now he can run and jump and play. But he's kind of a couch potato, so he was the perfect candidate for the treatment. Oh, oh, I'm so happy to hear that, that it ended well. He's a good boy. Yeah. So it's, it's treatable. It's preventable. It's good, good stuff. Right. By, by, by your heartworm prevention. It's just, it's just, it's just better that way. <laughs> Absolutely. Don't want regrets. That's for sure. God, no, it's not fun. I tell you what, <laughs> I'll tell you what. I, I, I'm really done with mosquitoes and I'm, a, I'm somebody who loves all creatures except mosquitoes. I'm what point of mosquitoes right now. I get the rid of mosquitoes. They are causing a lot of harm. I don't, I'm not impressed. Exactly. And here, especially in the South, it's, you know, that's our national bird. Really? I, and I really, I'm overly compassionate. I have a problem with my compassion. It's, it's an issue. It's an issue for me, except the mosquitoes. I'll save spiders. I've gotten made fun of before for saving spiders. I'm like, spiders eat mosquitoes. Spiders are our friends. Exactly. And I'm terrified of the spiders, but I will put a cup over them. I'll put a paper under, put them outside. Mosquitoes, no. Bye. Get out of here. Nope. Ain't nobody got time for that. Get out of here. So the holidays are coming up. Let's take a, a, a little shift from being super sad to, <laughs> to Christmas. <laughs> so are y'all excited? What, what do y'all do? What are your, your traditions for the holidays? Well, I have a nine-year-old boy. And so he's still, oh, he's the perfect age. Oh my gosh. Fever. And I, and I'm thinking this is probably our last year where it's going to, cause he's already, he saw me touch the elf on the shelf and was mortified. And I had to make a whole story to him. And anyway, so I think this is going to be his last year. So we're uh, believing. And um, so I'm going to try to, you know, I put up the house is full of decorations and it's, I like staying home on Christmas because we have our animals and it just feels so cozy. And, and we're going to take him just before Christmas to Santa's village, which is, you know, a couple few hours out of LA. We're going to go up there, go skiing and go to Santa's village and yeah, just great memories, that kind of thing. Absolutely love Christmas. Yes. So what do you like to cook for Christmas? Cause you're vegan. 
I am. So we do, we get the vegan roast and my husband makes this unbelievable vegan gravy and oh, it's absolutely delicious and amazing. And he put, does a whole, my husband does a whole thing of potatoes. And so my husband's the way better cook than me, if you want to know the truth, but there's, but I, I have my little, my little things that I'll get in there, but uh, yeah, I'll make some good vegan cookies and things like that. So. Oh, yum. My favorite cookies right now are vegan. They're like a mint chocolate chip, but they're so good. I think they're the best. I got them at the grocery store and I don't have the brand right in front of me. You'll have to email me later because that sounds so up my alley. I'm not a health I'm a comfort food, terrible vegan. I'm a terrible French fries and bread. <laughs> You're a terrible vegan. You hate salad? How can you hate salad? I'm like, well, you know, you gotta, you just, yeah, I don't know. I try, I try to eat the salad, but I'd rather have the potatoes and gravy. <laughs> I had a salad for lunch this this afternoon, I guess this morning. I don't know. What time is it? Who are you? Where am I? But, uh. So the, our time zones are different and my dumb ass was here like three hours early because I was like, oh, I'm going to be late. And then it was like, oh, time zones are stupid. I'm dumb. So I went back home, but I had gotten a salad and I got this beautiful, it has like strawberries and almonds and it was good. It was so like that sweet and savory, you know? So I was like shoveling in, in my face because I was like, oh gosh, I'm hungry, but I have to go talk about sad things. And I, oh my gosh, so like <laughs> shoveling it in my face. And then I got home and I was like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Should have, should have just tasted my food for a minute before I swallowed it. <laughs> so what are your favorite Christmas songs? Oh gosh. Well, right now I'm really into that song, but it's not a happy one. Listen, I love, I love the Mariah Carey, you know, I mean, I love all the, and Kelly Clarkson came up with it. It came out with a new one last year too, that I'm just so obsessed with right now, the whole album. But, um, but I'm kind of into this Carol, this, oh God, I just, what is it? It's called River. Have you heard it? It's so beautiful. It's like a sad love song about Christmas, but so it's maybe it's not like your jingle bellsy kind of one, but it's, but it's just stunning. So I like all, it feels appropriate for this episode though. <laughs> I'm a bit melancholy. That's definitely, it's a, it's a theme in my life. It's either, I just saw this meme that said, you know, I'm either Christmas movies or, or like murder stories. <laughs> it sums up my life. It's pretty a good old Christmas murder. I'm here for it. <laughs> a lifetime event. <laughs> Not Hallmark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when 32 year old Caitlin Palmer moved back to her hometown, <laughs> she reconnected with the love of her life, who was also a serial killer. <laughs> Oh God, it would be, yes, it's all, it's all ringing a bell. We could, we could write it. This could be a, this could be a thing. We could do a Christmas slasher film. All right. All right. Christmas, a Christmas slasher. That's all it has. It's, it's the ninth reindeer. It's slasher. (laughs) (laughs) Good. I very good. Actually, the ninth reindeer. Oh my God. You see the, it's called slasher and then underneath. The ninth reindeer. Oh my God. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And it starts out, it's like in the forest and there's this deer and there's this little girl and she's like, oh, look how pretty. And the deer, it's like, it's back. It's like a Kelpie. Like it's beckoning her to come pet it. And then like she goes to pet it and then the screen that goes black. And it's like slasher. You're dark. Oh my God. You put a little girl in this scenario. <gasps> wow. <laughs> level. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. Oh gosh. This is twisted. Your listeners are going to be like either loving it or hating it right now. Yeah. They're going to be like, mm, unsubscribe. Uh, I don't have time for that. Or like, 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 you know. Yeah. Like, 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 do that. I'll do that one. That's the best one. But, but spoiler alert for Slasher, the ninth reindeer, the dog doesn't die. We don't kill the dog in the, in the movie. Never. That's taking, no, no way. No, no. We'll kill the people, you know, sure. But or people are, Pointless. Yeah, why not? We'll be right back with more pet candy. Hey, pet parents. This is your favorite lifestyle guru, Renee Michelle, and I'm excited to tell you about my new show on pet candy. 
Join me and make some cute pet stuff. Talk about life and love and everything in between. Check out the Renee Michelle show on mypetcandy.com and let's have some fun. So you sing, could you sing us a little, little piece of that song? Oh my goodness. You didn't prep me for this. Oh my! Oh, okay. I mean, you don't have to, but peer pressure. Hey, what? What's which one? The one you were telling me about. Oh, I wish I had a river I could skate away on. I made my baby cry. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it at that sad note. <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. You're so, you're just like beautiful and wonderful and awesome. And you can sing and you can, and you're good. And it's just, oh, not fair. So good. Well, I think me and you need to be friends. We can cut this thing and me and you are going to be friends. We can sing. I think so too. Yeah. We can make Slasher into a musical. I'm loving this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving it so much. <laughs> anyway. Sing the Slasher song. Okay. What would the theme song for Slasher be? Oh my gosh. My husband could come up with it because he's a heavy metal guy. Oh, yes. It would probably start out regular like, you know, Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen, Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen. But do you recall the most morbid reindeer of all? Slasher! <laughs> Too good. Too stinking good. Love it. We uh we own the rights to this movie, everybody, by the way. So, you know. Yeah, don't even try it. Don't even try it. The listeners are like, don't worry. We're good. We're not feeling that idea. <laughs> oh, listeners, I love you so much. Why do y'all put up with me? I'm I'm grateful you do. So we would have to cast people in this movie. So you would you would have to be the lead. I uh, know, no, no. I like to be a side character. It's much. Classier. You want to be a side character? Okay, okay. So I, I, much more fun, anyway. I like to. Be yeah, yeah. You, you, yeah. Last girl. You have last girl vibes. Like you would survive. I would be the one. I would probably. Okay, so like the girl from the beginning is missing, right? And I'm a cop. I feel like the third to go. If I'm being perfectly honest, like I feel like you're third to go, but you're gonna hunt the living heck out of everybody after you're gone that's something's gonna happen oh yeah no i'm gonna fight back like let's be honest i'm gonna go out trying to pet slasher but boy i'm gonna try because i'm gonna be like oh you're so pretty stop eating my arm you silly boy and then i die (laughs) because that's who i am as a person (laughs) but like okay so i'm a cop right and i just moved to this small town and a girl goes missing and all the townspeople are like we don't question the things in these woods there's things out there we can't understand. And then like, you're, you're there and you and I become friends. And I'm like, do you know, like, what's going on? Like, what's going on in the forest? Like, blah, blah, blah. And you can say something really profound and awesome. And then you can be like, but, but still don't go in the woods. And I'll be like, I'm going to go in the woods. And it's Christmas time. Yes. Right, right, right. You think, well, I'm just going to hang this one little light in there. Just, just, just to make it pretty in this scary wood. You see. I'm just going to go look for footprints, even though it snowed 500 times. I'm not a great cop. Like, that's probably why I got... Not a great cop. It's got transferred here. Yeah. Transferred to the small town and... Because of some kind of scandal that comes to light at the end of the movie. Yes. There was... Somebody had somebody had a death wish for you. Yes. In the old town. <gasps> somebody, somebody arrested. Somebody arrested and you could... Yes. And I keep seeing little things that aren't there. And I keep thinking... You know, this might be that criminal. In fact, I know it is, but it's not. It's Slasher, the Ninth Reindeer. Duh, yeah. <laughs> and then it's like the last pain deer. That would be the that would be the commercial. It's either a good idea or we're just uh, we're just excited about it. But something about it is fun. There's for sure something. Maybe a short. Film. Oh yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not like a future. Not future length. It's not a full length feature. You know, you're not gonna go out to the theater to see it. But it would be something you pull up on YouTube and say, "Hey, you want to see this stupid shit?" And there it is. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm totally into it. So I would go out and I would. I would die trying to pet Slasher the Ninth Reindeer because that's who I am. I would see it's an animal and not a murderer. And I'd be like, hey, you know what? I love you and you got to eat. You know, I got you. 
And then like, maybe I'm having some kind of flashbacks to whatever happened at my previous town. And then I, I die. And then in the end, you're like, hey, whatever happened to that girl? And then like, it ends with you in the woods. Yes. And I find something of yours. Something. Of yes. You find something of mine and it's got blood on it. Yes. And it's Christmas. Maybe you're wearing a Christmas sweater. Yes. I'm wearing a Christmas sweater for sure. That's given. But what do I find that you left? Maybe, maybe you had your cop outfit on, but you had earrings with like little, you know, tacky little gifts or, you know, something on that, you know, I wear those. Because I'm a fun cop. Oh yeah. You're a fun cop. And that's like, that's just a hint that you're the fun cop. You had little like green gifty earring that I noticed. And I say, I like your earring. And you say, thank you. Before you head off to your death. And uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. And I and, find- and every line has to be delivered just like that. I like your earrings. Thank you. And then it's like, hello, Slasher. Would you like to eat me? I offer myself as tribute because you're very cute. I just want to pet your soft nose. I think the only time that we break out of that serious, sultry voice when we see Slasher and you go, you say, yes, I will not go into the wood. And then you look at the camera and you say, except to hang this one ornament on that tree. But then when you see Slasher, you can go, oh, my God. <laughs> but but nobody's expecting it because <laughs> yeah like it's it's all it's very dark it's very grainy like there's a lot of like grays and dark blues it's just a very solemn like color scheme except for the christmas lights which are kind of meant to be ominous and then that happens yeah oh i think that's it i think we're i think gold we wrote a hit. We wrote a new classic. Prancer, move over. Like that. A matter of minutes. We're like, we're, we're done. We're done. Yeah. Take that lifetime slash Hallmark slash slash Netflix Darkland. I mean, obviously. I mean, it's pretty great. <laughs> this is my favorite thing. Oh, my gosh. I've had so much fun talking to you. And I'm so happy that we have come around to this funny, fun thing. Because that's you know, going back to what we originally started talking about, which is pet loss and just how shitty and terrible it is to let's be funny and engage with the people that are here. And it's, it's important. Absolutely. Life is up and down, right? And so you got to find humor, even in the sadder, sadder times, right? Yep, sure do. It's a good coping mechanism. Dark humor. I I really appreciate dark humor. I guess it's just because of my work and my husband's work. And, you know, it's just like, yeah, well, you know. Same, same. Oh, please. It's, it's, it's what has gotten me through my whole life is humor. Hopefully your listeners aren't offended by any of this stuff where, you know. Oh, no, listeners, please don't be offended. That was not my intention at all with my badass rock and roll reindeer. So (laughs) who does not die? And neither does the dog. Because the cop has a dog and it's a Pomeranian named Panzer. <laughs> true to life. True to life. True life. Yes. Well, I mean, it's like a little Easter egg. It's a little desk winch Easter egg I throw in there. Like maybe Karen Stevens, my mean customer character, is like in a cafe at one point, like just in the background, just a little, little cameo complaining about her burger or something. We'll be right back with more pet candy. Want to know a secret? For only $20, you can speak to a credentialed veterinary professional 24-7 instantly. With Petsy, you can. Enjoy your life and be stress-free knowing that you can speak with a professional whenever you need to. Download the app for free today in the App Store. You will be happy you did. Well, Reagan, this has been so much fun. You are so amazing. You are so fun. You're so smart. You're just so you're just so great. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on my little show. I really appreciate it. I know you're busy. If our listeners want to get in touch with you um, or audition for our movie, where can they where can they contact you? I'm at Reagan J. Pasternak on Instagram. Um, we have our Griffin's Heart page, which is griffinsheart.com. And we're giving your listeners a $5 off if they want to buy it at griffinsheart.com. And I think we used the promo code Queens5. So that's Q-U-E-E-N-S-5 if you want to use that there. 
yeah, I have a, a little cyber memorial that we just started for also for people who want to share their share their stories of their animals. I'm loving, 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 loving reading, reading th- these posts that people are sending me. And that's about it. Love it. Love everything about it. And again, listeners, that's Queens 5. Would make a lovely holiday gift because it is a beautiful box. It's a gorgeous book. So that would, I mean, hey, you know, if you don't know what to buy for your pet people, I mean, hey, I'm just saying, you know, you could get my girl's book because it's good. And it is available on Amazon, but we'd, would you rather people, you probably rather them go to griffinsheart.com. Does it matter? Well, we can do the promo at Griffin's Heart, but you can absolutely go to Amazon. Amazon's been great to us. So we're, we're, we're fine with whatever, whatever your listeners prefer. If you want to get this amazing offer with Queens 5, and we'll link it in the show notes, but you can save money at Griffin's Heart, and we'll add it in the show notes. But yeah, you get $5 off. That's good. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate you so much. This has been so fun. Started out really, really dark, ended really fun, and also kind of dark. But you know, it's Christmas. What you going to (laughs) do? Life. This is the reality of life, yin and yang, right? Exactly. Exactly. Well, that's going to do it for today. If you enjoyed the show, hit that subscribe button. See y'all next week. And until then, remember, the best pet is the one you have at home. Pet Candy, it's Pet Candy Radio.